Hello everybody, welcome. Let's program the mouse singleton. The mouse singleton is going to be a lot like the keyboard class we created. We can probably just copy a lot of that code directly and then just rewrite it to use the mouse, but there's some things that the mouse has that we're going to have to code. We're going to want to get the position of the mouse relative to the window and then also relative the, to the screen we created for rendering. So first of all, let's go to our input folder and we're going to create a new class. I'm going to call this the flat mouse. This is going to be a singleton class, so I'm going to make this sealed. We're going to initialize it just like we did the keyboard. In fact, we can go to the keyboard class and probably just copy all of this information. In fact, let's, let's go ahead and just copy the keyboard class. Copy that, and we'll just insert it right in here. Anywhere it says flat keyboard now, we're going to change that to the flat mouse. Let's go ahead and just replace. So let's go ahead and uh, replace all. We found five of them and replaced them. Now we have the keyboard state here. We'll need to replace that one. So this will be the mouse state. And it's not finding the mouse state because we need to bring in the mono game namespaces. Okay, so let's change this to the mouse state. This is now going to be the previous mouse state. And this will be the current mouse state. And in fact, I could have just renamed that, so there we go. Well, I got that one anyways. Let's rename this one. Okay, this is going to be the mouse get state. This is going to be the mouse get state. This will be the previous mouse state. Now, instead of having key down, we're going to check each individual button on the mouse to see if it's down. We actually have to check each individual mouse button. Let's get rid of these. And let's check to see if a button is down. Is left button down? So let me just get the current state of the left button and we compare that to button state pressed. So if it's pressed, we're going to return true that the left button is down. And let's go ahead and do this for the other buttons as well. So this will be the right button. And this one will be the middle button. Let's change this. Okay, that looks good. So we, now we know if each button is down. We also want to be able to get clicks from the mouse, just like we did on the keyboard. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing we did up here. We're going to check to see if the button is down. So if the current state is down, so let's do that. So the current mouse state left button, button state is pressed. And then we want to do the previous mouse state left button is released. Okay, so just like the keyboard, if the left button is currently down but the previous state is released, then that is a click. We can do that for the three buttons as well. Okay, so we're going to do right and middle. And then all we have to do is change these. And the middle button. Okay, there's all of the buttons that we want to handle for now. And the last thing we want to do is start getting the mouse position. I'm going to make a property to get the mouse position. And this is going to be relative to the game window, okay, or the back button. I'm going to return a point because this is going to be an integer value. And it's going to be called window position. And we're just going to return the current mouse state position. This position returns the mouse's position relative to the window. So if we draw this up here, here's our game window. As far as the mouse state position will start at this point here. Okay, so this is where the back buffer starts. It increases in x this way and increases in y this way. We also have our screen, which is where we're doing all of our rendering, and it's stretched to fit in our window, something like this. We want to be able to also get where we are in the screen. But let's make a separate function that will tell us where we are in the game screen. We're going to call this and return a vector to screen position. We'll pass in a reference to the screen class. And the first thing we want to do is get a rectangle that represents how is the screen actually stretched to fit. So we can we want to get that rectangle that defines what the screen actually looks like inside of our window. We're going to call this screen destination rectangle. And we can use the screen class to and actually I don't have access to that right now, so let's go back into the screen class. Here's the calculate destination rectangle. 
it is a private function. Let's go ahead and make this internal. So then every class inside the current assembly can access that function. Let's tell the screen we want to calculate the destination rectangle. Now inside the mouse class we know where the screen is positioned and we know how it is scaled onto our window. Let's get the mouse position inside the window and we'll just call this window position. That'll be equal to the, the window position property we just created up there. To figure out where we are inside the screen, let's go ahead and take a look over here. If this is the window we're drawing to, and this is the screen we're stretching onto that window, we need to figure out what our mouse position is relative to the position of the screen on the back buffer. So if we have a mouse that's sitting at this point here, and this is our screen position here, I'm going to call it the screen position. We'll call this mouse position. So we need to figure out how far along the X and uh, how far along the Y do we need to move to get to the mouse position from the screen position. So the, this will be the mouse position relative to the screen position. So back here in the code, in order to calculate the relative mouse position to the screen destination rectangle position, I'm going to create a variable called SX. That'll be the screen relative position all you need to do is take the window position of the mouse and subtract the destination rectangle uh, position. And we do the same thing for the Y. Now we need to find out what's the ratio? How far into this screen are we? I want to get this in normalized values. We can figure out how far we are into the screen by dividing by the screen's width. It's going to give us a value which is a ratio that tells us how far into the screen we are. If we're in between 0 and 1, we know we're in the screen. If we're at a value less than 0, then we know we're outside the screen to the left side of the screen. If we are greater than 1, we know that we're on the outside of the screen, but uh, on the right side of the screen. Let's go ahead and divide S x by the destination rectangle. The same thing for the y, we'll divide that by the height of the screen. Now we have a value between 0 and 1. In order to get the actual value, what's the actual point we are in the screen, we're going to now multiply these values by the size of the screen. We're going to take sx, multiply this by the screen width and SY and multiply by the screen height. And we can simply return this as a new vector. So let's return vector two and that'll be the SX and SY. We can go ahead and test this out now. Here, let's bring in the flat mouse and we're gonna ask for an instance of the mouse. We need to update the mouse. And then inside, I have this key clicked tilde command. Every time I press that now, I also, in addition to telling me what the watch says, which I don't really need anymore, um, in fact, let's go ahead and drop out all of this debugging code we had in there before that was just creating a bunch of lines. We're not going to use that code anymore. We don't need the watch class anymore. And here is our shape stuff we don't need anymore. Good, we can go ahead and bring in that sprite that we were drawing before and we don't need the X anymore here either. So let's just change that back to a constant value. And I'm gonna make this a square value as well. So it'll be 256 by 256, okay? So then it matches the same aspect ratio of our original sprite. Here, we don't need to move the X anymore and we don't need to tell the user that the arrow is clicked. So back in the uh, tilde, once I press that, let's get some information to the console window. We're going to tell the console that we want to write the mouse's window position and the screen position. Well, let's go ahead and write mouse window position, and then we'll add in mouse uh, window position. And then let's write the mouse screen position. And we'll do that, we'll call that function get screen position. There we go. And we need to pass in the screen. So let's go ahead and test this out and see what happens. Okay, so there's the sprite we're drawing, scaled nice and large over here. 
let's put the mouse really close to what zero would be. I should be somewhere in like one, one, or two, two, or something like this. I'm gonna go ahead and hit tilde and see what it says. It's telling us that relative to the window, we're really close to zero. We're at uh, one, three, and I, that looked about right according to where I put the mouse. But relative to the uh, screen, we're at one, but then a negative 21 saying that in the Y, I'm actually above the screen. And that's according to the uh, scale of the screen, the actual screen itself. Let's see if I can get this real close to zero and just press that button and yep, that looks just right. Those numbers look good. Okay, and let's see if I can get this real close to zero in the screen position. So, okay, there we go. And so you can see it's telling me on the window position I've gone down 24, but relative to the screen, I'm sitting at 0, 0, which is right there. And that looks good. Now, if I put this right in the middle or close to the middle of the screen, I should get something that says, well, let's see, how big is our screen? So our 1280 by 720. So half of that would be like, uh, was it 640 and 360? Let's bring these back up. So if I'm real close, try to get kind of close to the middle here. Obviously, I'm just eyeballing this. According to the window position, we're there, and according to the screen position, we're there. And if I put this down at the bottom right of the screen, that looks right, because the screen is 1280 by 720, and I wasn't exactly at that point, but I was close, and you see I was off by about three. 1277 by 741 looks uh, just right. The other thing we want to test is the mouse clicks, so let's go ahead and make some, we'll make some mouse click functions here. So left button click, just have the console write that the mouse, left mouse button clicks. And let's do this for each button. So we'll do right and middle. And change this and this one. When I click the mouse, let's go ahead and see what it says. There's the left. There's the right, and there's the middle. So that looks like it's working just right. We're getting clicks from the mouse. We have the position of the mouse. Every time I move this, it's telling me where it is relative to the boundaries. And actually, I'm noticing one thing that I need to change. I've been using a coordinate system that actually goes Y going up is returning a value saying that zero, zero is here and y plus y is going down. That's what the function's returning. Go back to our class. So I actually need to flip the y value so my coordinate system starts at the bottom left for the screen. What that looks like is we, the sy is gonna be equal to the screen height minus sy. That should just flip the value over so it has the same coordinate system that we're using for everything else on the screen. So let's go ahead and run that, and let's see, so up here I should get a really high y value for my screen. Yeah, 719, and the screen height is 720, so that would be the very top of the screen, 719, and then this would be the very bottom at 3, and this should be like 32, 32 right in here, yeah, just about, there we go. So now the mouse screen position is getting returned in the same coordinate system that we're using to draw all of our graphics.